You know, Sekou, uh, one of the things I love doing is I love being in the green room. It's like behind the scenes is where the conversation takes place. Um, your bio is so extensive. Like I would spend the whole show reading the bio. Um, do you mind taking a moment and telling folks who is Sekou Andrews? And um, what are you up to these days, my man? Who is Sekou Andrews? All right. It all started in 19. No, I'm just playing. Uh, who am I? You know, I'm evolving is the first thing we got to make sure we acknowledge, right? I think who we all were at the end of 19 is different than who we've proven to be uh, even right now. Some of the best of us is coming out. Some of the worst of us is coming out. And so I love the fact that we, you know, can acknowledge that we're constantly evolving. Um, but I think the the continuity of who I am is, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a poetic voice. I'm, a, I'm an artist. I'm a... I'm a, a, a fighter. My name means fighter, warrior, Sekou, African name that means fighter and warrior. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm an educator. I'm a romantic. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a husband. I'm a son. Um, and I'm, I'm, I, I always try to be a source of inspiration wherever I go. Um, and I think that's one of the main things that drives me. You know, I'm a model builder. And trying to try and I'm a trailblazer, you know, I'm a pioneer. I, I love the I love the uncharted terrain. I love going where somebody says there isn't a path and telling them, you know what, watch this. Watch what we're about to do. We're about to make a path real quick. Like I love that, that the spirit of that. And so I'm I'm definitely uh, you know, all of that combined is the is is the most important thing. I'm not I'm not any one of those things. I'm all of it combined and I and I live and I thrive in the space in between the labels. Right. People want to say you have to be this. You got to be that. And I love that space in between the labels because that because the label was once that space before it became a label, before it became a genre, before it became uh, a category, before it became an existing industry. It was somebody's what if it was somebody's. I kind of think that this is possible, but I have no evidence of it except in my head. And somebody expanded on that space until it became a genre, an industry, a category, et cetera, et cetera. And that's the space that I love to I love to, to exist in and to thrive in. Uh, that's the space that makes me happy. So at the end of the day, because of all of those things, I am a happy entrepreneur. <laughs> Boom. You see what I did there? You see what I did there, Chay? Huh? Because I got you, baby. I got you. <laughs> I am a happy entrepreneur, man. How does he do those things? I have no idea. Look, but, <laughs> <laughs> that's why I love being in the green room, man. It's nothing like being in the green room. It really isn't. Um, you know, on this particular episode, I know you're not going to have a conversation. Um, what can folks expect from Sekou Andrews? Because it's not just a standard, here's A, B, C, D. But this type of conversation, what should they expect from you? And why should they pay attention, my man? What should they expect from me uh, in general or, or what do you mean? Well, we're going to you and I have an open and frank conversation and you're going to yeah. talk about what is possible. Right. And for yeah. a number of folks, let's just address it. They're going through a shift right now. They're going through a change. There's uncertain waters. I believe oh, you're yeah. going to talk about, you know, how do they not only pivot, not only do they shift, but even yourself, how do they go out into uncharted waters that seem impossible right now? I mean, I'm not being funny, but for some folks, all of a sudden their whole business is shifted upside down. Yeah. Take yeah. a moment and talk so, about that. So I, I think that, first of all, it's all mindset. Mm. It, it all starts with mindset. And I and that's big in everything that I teach from from my, my speaker training to training folks on poetic voice to talking to entrepreneurs to inspiring folks through keynotes. Uh, it all starts with mindset for me because I think that... Um, that that's what ends up making us or breaking us before we take our first step. Right. Um, and I think that we're experiencing that we're experiencing the evidence of that right now in this state of the world with this pandemic, like um, my, people's mindset, people no longer have the distractions they had. They no longer had the resources they had. They no longer had the tools. They no longer have the help. They no longer have the support system. They no longer have the infrastructure. You know, all they have is them, <laughs> you know? And so at the end of the day, how successful you are and how much you're able to, to, to uh, build your way out of this depends on how well you were building yourself before you came into this, 
right? How were you building your mindset? Were you building a mindset of disruption before disruption hit? Were you building a mindset of innovation that re that, re that is going to, uh, that's required now in a time like this, where you need creativity, you need imagination? Were you, were you uh, building a mindset of resilience? Were you building a mindset of, of being able to overcome fear and limiting beliefs? Because all of that is needed right now. All of that is being called up to the surface right now for all of us in some of the most personal uh, ways imaginable, not just in our business world. The business world and the personal world are all blended together now, right now. And so I think that when you think about what to expect and what it is that we need to be doing right now to not only survive, but to not only survive while we're in this, but to thrive as we come out of this, um, it truly, truly, truly is most important that you are focused on how it is that you build yourself up first, how it is that you create a mindset of strength, how it is that you are, are, are fueling yourself, making sure that you're keeping positivity in your life, making sure that you're keeping joy in your life, making sure that you're remembering that, that, that uh, depression doesn't happen at one moment, right? Uh, 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 trauma, uh, you know what, you know, there, there's certainly traumatic moments, but when you think about like, the culmination of these things, uh, panic attacks and so forth. They, they, the things that chipped away at us, right? Stress is these little small cumulative things that chipped away at our armor, chipped away at our strength um, until something came crashing down. And when we tried to hold our armor up to block it, the armor crumbled because we were allowing these little things to chip away at it. So you have to be intentional now about building back up that armor. You have to be intentional about patching that up, you know, doing some, having a morning routine right now that strengthens you and fills you with joy. Boom, you put a little, a little caulk, a little cement in one of those chips and, and making sure that you're paying attention to your mindfulness and your meditation. Boom, you put a little caulk and a little, a little, a little uh, a cement, right? A little filler into that chip and, and making sure that you're focused on positive time with your with your spouse. Take a walk with your wife or your husband and 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 just in the middle of the day, enjoy a coloring book with your with your kids and make sure that you're getting your rest and make sure you don't come off your nutrition plan and make sure that you're still working out and make sure that you're still paying attention to your faith and your prayer. Like all of these things are building you up. Make sure that you're educating yourself. Make sure that you're taking this time to learn and invest in yourself right now so that you can come out of this strong. This is the time to build your bigger muscles right now, right? So you used to go into the gym and you used to working out your big muscles, your chest and your and your glutes, right? And your abs. This is the time to work on that muscle that holds your elbow together because you're going to need that joint. This is the time to work on that knee because you're going to need to be able to bend and lift yourself back up. This is the time to invest and work on the small muscles that strengthen you, that fill those chips in your armor so that as the world comes crashing down on top of you, you've built that armor up and your armor is strong enough to withstand it. And that starts right here. And that's what I think that folks need to make sure that they're paying attention to now more than ever. I tell people all the time, I'm going in my trainings, my storytelling trainings, my speaker trainings, my my uh, my keynote, uh, my keynotes that I give, you know, or whether I'm teaching someone how to do a keynote or I'm giving a keynote, I tell people all the time, I'm a teacher. I can teach you a bunch of stuff, and I do. I teach you fantastic rock star techniques. None of it matters if your mindset is blocking it at the start. Uh, I used to name my storytelling training "Insist on Story" because I found that none of the storytelling techniques that I teach matter if you have told yourself in advance, I'm not a storyteller. No, I'm not a storyteller. It's not, it's not my thing, I don't just, and then I call BS. I go, no, you've been telling stories since you, since you were a little kid. Stories is almost how you learn how to communicate. So don't sit here and tell me that you're not a storyteller. You're gonna leave this business session right now. You're gonna leave this conference. You're gonna leave this training and you're gonna go to, a, uh, go to dinner with your family or go to a dinner meeting or a reception and you're gonna tell five to 10 stories before the night is over. So stop saying you're not a storyteller. Shift your mindset so that you can receive the possibilities that someone or a situation can can offer you. And I and I'll close by saying I was talking to one of my uh, my team members recently and asking them some of the quotes that that uh, that we talk that we share with the world that we want to embody now. Like what is a Seiku quote? What is a quote that we send out to the world that we are going to make our personal anthem? Uh, during this time, and I loved hearing what they came up with and what meant the most to them. And one of my one of my uh, content creators said, um, he said it's a paraphrase of a reverse psychology of one of my phrases, which is <laughs> I am not a creative. He said, 
and he said it's a, it's a it's a version of you saying I am not a storyteller. And he said it struck me so powerfully right now because so many people walk around saying I'm not a creative, I'm not a creative, I'm a linear person, I'm a blah blah blah. Well, now in this situation, creativity is the tr- what is it? Uh, necessity is the mother of invention. Mm-hmm. Like now, these are the times where creativity matters. Creativity is part of your survival. You no longer have the luxury of saying you are not a creative. Now, it's necessary that you invest in your creativity, that you embrace your creativity, that you honor and acknowledge the creativity that was always in you, because that is what's going to help you to creatively navigate this situation and come out of this stronger than you were when we came in it. So I think that's one of the things that we need to start to expect. Woo, I tell you what, Seiku just turns everything upside down, which I love. For those <laughs> folks that are out there right now, you're watching the one and only Seiku Andrews, by the way, for Tamika, who's out there, Joan Corner Woman, Wilson is out there, D. Bolden says, I am a storyteller. Lisa says, I am a storyteller. It's not a storyteller, yes. thing, but they love it. Dr. Baruch says he's out there right now watching. Karen is watching. Stephanie is watching. So many folks are watching right now, man. I know we're going to get into this, but here's what I want you all to do. Seiku, um, can they pay this message forward? I, I know you normally get paid to do these things, man, but I want you all to share this message. We're going to bless someone else. We're going to empower someone else. And here's how you can do it. Look right below the video and hit the share button. When they hit the share button, Seiku, they get to write some words up top. Now, I was going to have them write, you are awesome, but they don't really understand the framework of that yet. But you go ahead right now. You hit the share button and write, you are awesome, hashtag Seiku Andrews. Now you you go ahead yeah. now. Now I'm gonna have them frame in a minute what you are awesome is all about. But this is not about Seiku. That's not what this conversation is about. It's not about Seiku World. It's about you. So how do you bless someone else? Hit the share button. We hit the share button. Right. You are awesome. And he's gonna get to awesomeness and put hashtag Seiku Andrews. Now why do you do that? Someone's sitting at home right now. They're safe with their loved ones, but they need to be encouraged. Someone else is wondering what they're going to do in their business. Someone else is doing really, really well, and they're trying to write a check to their team. Seiko, in just one minute, and then I want you to talk about awesomeness. Why should they take a moment to even share this message with someone else and pay it for it? And you're giving inspiration, but you're also going to give some techniques as well, which is really cool. Why should they pay this message for it? I mean, if we if we have never had a situation that indicates that we are all in all in this world together before we have it now we are all in this world together we are all in this situation together there are plenty of situations that we have experienced in our lifetime that affect, that that drastically radically tragically even affect one area of our life maybe two You know, oh, man, we're dealing with something with the economy, dealing with something with unemployment. We're dealing with something with health care. We're dealing with something with our family. We're dealing with something with uh, uh, our our, our small business. Right. We're dealing with we're dealing with the with something that's in one lane and we can all the other lanes are still strong. And man, but this lane is falling apart. Now it's everywhere. We're dealing with all of it at the exact same time. And everybody is dealing with it all at the exact same time. And that is one of the things that makes this so unprecedented for so many of us in our lifetime, is that it's not just, oh man, I gotta figure out how to you know, make sure I got money in my account. I gotta figure out how to make sure I'm still paying my team members. They gotta figure out how to make sure their money is in their account. I'm trying to figure out how to make sure I got money also for my family members that don't, that aren't as successful as me, that don't have the same stability as me. And I gotta make sure that I'm taking care of making sure that mom is staying afloat financially. And I gotta make sure that mom's health is staying up, uh, staying afloat. And and grandma is good. And I can't even get to grandma because I can't go see her. So I gotta figure out how to do all, all this when I'm in a virtual world, when I'm stuck at home, when I can't touch anyone, when I can't see anyone. I gotta figure out all of this stuff all at the same time. And it's changing by the week, by the day, by the hour. So what I thought, what, what I thought I was going to be able to get for a loan yesterday, I'm not going to be able to get, looks like I don't qualify for that. And what I thought I was, how I thought I was going to be able to uh, send something to mom, you know, or, 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 or granddad, that suddenly that's not available or, or that's the recommendation on that has changed. It is just, it's internal and external chaos. And so I think that, that the reason why we have to, uh, to pay it forward 
the reason why we have to make sure that we are are are, are ex here's here's the way to put it. We have to we have to counter how how much things are how radically things are changing on the negative side with being radically positive and intentionally radically positive on that positive side. So we have to up level our kindness. We have to up level our collaboration. We have to up level our, our, our giving. We have to up level our ability to do good radically, as radically as our worlds are being torn apart. That's the only way we counterbalance this. So we, we have, this is the time that we force ourselves to give when we feel like we have nothing. Like if you if you have any kind of if you're a believer, you have any kind of faith, well, no matter what you follow, there is probably some scripture, some some statement somewhere and whatever you believe that says help your neighbor, that says give when you have nothing, that says all of these things that we go and we celebrate every week at, a, at, a, at some temple. Uh, and now is the time to put that in action. Now is the time to help when we feel like we're weak. Now is the time to give somebody strength when we feel like we don't even have any strength ourselves. Now is the time to to allow ourselves to be vulnerable and break down as a show of our strength. Now is the time to now is the time to to be able to sh give someone strength to help fill in their vulnerability. Like now is the time for us to step up and be good and do the right thing and be the people that we know we can and should be. And I think that's why people like me are, are, are showing up with our gifts and what we can offer this world, because this is why this is what I was put on the planet to do. This is why I'm here. And yes, I found a way to monetize it. I found a way to, 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 to be that that entrepreneur that's that, that's successful um, uh, financially. Um, but that's not how it started. Right. How it started was I love doing this. I love the impact it has on people. And I want to do more of that. And this is the time for us to go back to to, to that purpose, that purpose driven way of, of waking up and going about our day. Wow. I didn't know he was do it. Seku just does something different every single time. For those folks that are out there, here's how you can pay this message forward. As he mentioned, bless someone else, do some good, hit the share button. And when you hit the share button, write those words. I am awesome. And then when you do that, put a hashtag Seku Andrews. Now, I'm going to ask him to talk about that in a moment. I got to introduce him. Uh, Seku, I don't have time to read your stuff. Man. I'm, I'm going to show him a video, I think. But I want you right now to hit, hit the share button and then write, I am awesome. And then put a hashtag Seku Andrews. Someone needs to hear that. Someone needs to be empowered. Someone needs to be uplifted. And someone is doing really, really, really well. They got a lot of pressure. And so they want to keep what they have right now. Say cool. Right. It's okay with you as Andrea Swift is out there watching. You got Kevin Peck in the house. What's up, Kevin? My man out there. Alonzo Mays is watching. Tanya Fairley is watching. So many folks are tuning in right now. Let me go ahead and just share a little bit of who you are. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to show it to them visually. And then we come back, man. We'll just get started. We're in the we're in the green room, by the way. So we're gonna do something entirely different. We've never done this right. episode, but we're gonna start don't by let, introducing don't let the, the blue background. Don't let the blue background fool you. Okay, this is the green room. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the blue and orange background e equals green. Only That's you right. say something That's like right. that. <laughs> Only say that. So I'm not gonna introduce the show, man. I'm gonna introduce who you are. So they have an idea. Some of them want to know who are you. Let's go ahead and kick that off. Let's get that queued up. Hit the share button. If you hit the share button, look right below the video and put I share. Just put I share. That's just the bat signal that you are blessing someone else. All right, take it away. Cue it up. Let's tell them about who is Seku Biddle. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Take it away, guys. Poetry does not belong here. I said, well, this is a new category of speaking that's disrupted the industry. This is poetic voice. For those of y'all that are asking, what is happening here? They said, that's impossible. Building a better business. I said, watch this. You think I'm impossible. When in fact, our real impact you is in our inspiration. It's inspirational speaking, seamlessly blended with spoken word poetry. We got the rapper. You think that is logical. Innovation. You think you know about me. They said, our company is too conservative. They don't cry or cheer. They just come to learn. I said, and they will, but they are human beings, right? I said, watch this. We'd love to catalog talk today. 
and he delivered this extraordinary experience. Sales! Sales! Oh my God, he rocked the house. It's 8 a.m. at a tech conference. It's 8 a.m. at a apparel conference and I'm crying. That's the impact that you can have with storytelling. I got things I could say that would probably change your view. Seiko had us at the edge of our seats for an hour. He got a standing ovation. This man wowed me, floored me. The messages he was conveying, the reaction was very positive. I get to help people expand their possibilities. Any audience, on any stage, in any media. And don't miss the 53rd Grammys. I love being a poetic voice. And my vision was to take poetry beyond the slams, the festivals, the poetry TV shows, the Seiko, the Misfit, the theaters, even the films and the videos. Because I am we're actually kind of proud of World News now because you debuted this whole idea. So I'm incredibly proud of what I've been able to do for this art form of spoken word. They could brought the house down and touched our hearts. The letters I am are the only thing between possible and impossible, meaning I'm the only thing between possible and impossible. So every day I choose to do the I'm possible. This is not just speaking. This is not just performance. This is not just poetry or just education. This is E, all of the above. Let's go make some magic, shall we? This is Poetic Voice. Watch this. Well, welcome to the stage, the one and only, for the first time, but the last time, the one and only Seku Andrews. What's up, man? Now we're finally, <laughs> we're, we're finally kicking off the show, which is exciting, man. That's probably the longest green room we ever had, but it was amazing. It was incredible. For those folks that hit the share button, we appreciate it. Thank you so much. You're playing at Ford. And Seku, um, if we can, before we even get started, um, I, I told him to mention that I am awesome, right? And, and they shared that message for it. And when you hit the share button, I'm going to ask Seiko if it will just take a minute or two. You can't get into the whole I am awesome, okay? But I want mm -hmm. him to frame the conversation. And this time, when you hit the share button, you're going to put you are awesome. Because now he's going to explain what I am awesome this is all about. And then you can share this with someone else. You can bless someone else. And what I like about it, Seiko, is you're doing this not only for yourself and your team, but also you're doing it for companies. You're doing it for corporations. You're doing it in yeah. a virtual setting and helping other folks grow and uplift their business. And you get very technical with techniques later, but take a minute or two. You know, I got to ask you, man, I got to kick off. It's kind of framed that I am awesome. And this is something I want y'all to do every single day for the next seven days. For the next seven days, I want you to tell yourself, I am awesome. Uh, say, could cue it up for and frame it, frame it. What is it about? Because they don't even know. I just yelling, I am awesome. They don't even know. So, uh, what you want, well, I'm, I'm going to add to your homework assignment. Shay told you to say, I am awesome <laughs> for the next seven days. I want you to hit the soul selfie as part of that. And the soul selfie, the awesome pose, is basically like the same way that you have your phone. You know, you grab your phone and you take a selfie of yourself and you're like, click, click, click. This is how I look, click. This is how I look, click. And then you send it out to the world. Now you're going you're gonna to take a selfie of your soul, of who you are inside. And to do that, all you do, you can do it right now. Okay, you can do it right now. You put your hand in the air. You turn it inward, you make a claw like you're holding a little hand mirror, you bend at the elbow, lean into it like you're looking for your most powerful, your most, your mightiest, your most beautiful, your smartest self. And once you find that self that you know is the most awesome version of you, you simply say the words, I am awesome. And you say it like you mean it, you say it like you believe it, and you let that be the physical device that brings forth your awesomeosity, if you will. And all of this came from and led to uh, a piece that I, I created that became one of my more one of my more popular pieces. Exactly. Oh, right. And um, and every time I did the piece, I would always hit this pose. And eventually, people started taking ownership of that. They co-opted it. And every time, like a husband and wife did something, they look at each other and go. Yeah. Or every time like business partners, you know, got the deal, they would go awesome. And so I found myself going, let's let's make sure we turn that into an organic movement. And I shot a video of this poem called The Awesome Anthem. And uh, I'll give you a little taste of it right now. Just a little taste so you know what it is. Um, I, I talk about 
holding that 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 uh that, that reflection up and letting making making sure that your mirror sees the right version of you. And the little taste of it is, and I'm not saying there aren't those days when I'm pushed to the edge where still waters meet earth and I fall to my knees to look upon the water's surface. But as I stare at my murky reflection with these broken down eyes, God sees his reflection in me from the other side and thinks to herself, uh, I don't know what he thinks he sees, but he must not be looking at me because I am awesome. Like the science of miracles and the mathematics of purpose, awesome. Like, like the, like knowing how our brains can always calculate the what of who and the when of where, but the soul must solve for why. Awesome. Like the thought of God and logic, having faith that we will figure ourselves out. Awesome. Like how the moment I truly discovered the great I am was the same moment I discovered how truly great I am. And I am not perfect, but I'm perfect like I am. I'm not beautiful like I used to be. I'm beautiful like I am. Like the scar where a breast once was. Like survival where a death once was. Like the better where a best once was. Every gray hair, a, a trophy, every wrinkle fold, a story, every pound of fat, a challenge, reminding me there is always something to pursue and always something to celebrate. So that's just a little taste of what you get in the awesome anthem. Make sure you go to that video, theawesomeanthem.com, and don't just share the phrase "I am, I am awesome" with somebody. Share that video with them. Doctors have been using that with depression patients. Therapists have been using it. Like it absolutely has been having a therapeutic and cathartic effect on raising people's spirits, and we need that more than ever now. I love it. I love it. It's one of my favorite pieces, man. I hold on to it all the time. I had to tell myself a lot of times, I am awesome. That's right. And, and, and I needed that just to put that energy into my body. You know, they're, they're watching you, Sekou. And for those folks that are out there right now, do me a favor. Just look right below the video. And just write, I am awesome. Just do that right now. And when someone writes those words, I am awesome, you hit the like button. Hit the heart button. Tell them, yes, you are. See, we can love on each other. We can support each other. But as you're doing, as you're writing, I am awesome, like Kim War Dr. Kim Warren Martin and Reginald Shelton and Dr. Shana Lewis is in the house. What's going what? up? You, you, you got Marky Braden in the house, by the way. My cousin in the house. You know she got to do a shout out to Duke. You know she got to do a shout out to Duke Ellington. That's just her. Ellington in the house. <laughs> what? DC. <laughs> Cuz I got the shout out for you live cuz I did it for you. So you That's can use right. that. She said I want to be able to go back to him, tell him this is what he said. Well, he just said shout out to Duke Ellington. You heard him. That's right. All day. My question to you is and I know you you get very serious when you're working with companies and corporations is um they're going through change right now and talk a little bit about how you decided to take being poetic and then <laughs> which is really crazy and then putting that into business. And then mixing that into telling a story so that you created this own thing called poetic voice. I mean, you 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 created this. You created this. Yeah. Take a moment and break that down because somebody's going through a change right now. Someone is trying to do something that's never been done before and they are forced to do it. Give us in a short amount of time a little bit of the backstory and then how you arrived there today because this is what you've been doing for corporations like Nike and Toyota and Cisco and so many other folks. Talk yeah. about that, if you will. Yeah. So, um, so you know, I didn't wake up originally planning on doing poetry. I, I, I fell in love with hip hop. I fell in love with uh, acting. Um, and I always had education and entrepreneurship and artistry nurtured in me by my by my parents. Um, so it was very much like, yes, be creative, but also, boy, get your get your butt to college. Right. And so um, I, I, I had that balance in me. And when I started pursuing my hip hop, started pursuing my acting. I ended up going to open mics to build a fan base for my for my music. And then I kind of accidentally fell in love with spoken word poetry. It was not the plan. And then so the entrepreneur in me kicked in and said, well, wait a minute. Now, with hip hop, there's there's an actual industry, right? With comedy, with theater, with dance, there's with all this painting, there's a, there's an industry for it. Spoken word poetry in particular doesn't really have a strong commercial viable, commercially viable industry. So what do I do with this? Like, is it just going to be a hobby and I go and I, and I keep getting a job or what? Um, and I just felt like the more I fell in love with the art form, the more I felt like it deserved to have an industry. And so then the more I'm upset and angry I got that it didn't have an industry, that I would do television gigs that were poetry shows 
and everybody would get paid. The dancers, the bouncers, the singers, the DJ would all get paid, but the poets did it for exposure. And I was like, this is a show about poetry. Why are we the only ones not getting paid? And I just felt like it's because we don't have an industry. We don't have anything that's that's established what our value is and anybody backing us up and anybody fighting for us. And so I just felt like, well, uh, damn it, then, then we're going to build that. And so the, art, the, the entrepreneur in me got more excited about building that industry than sort of just being, you know, chasing after the same... Uh, the same crumbs and, and acting and hip hop and everything else. And so um, I started pursuing that. I quit my job. I was an elementary school, fifth grade teacher. Uh, I quit my job 17 years ago to become a full time poet. And I have not looked back since. And after that, I, I won some national poetry slam championships and became the top slam poet in the nation. And I did a couple of national poetry tours and I released uh, you know a bunch of CDs. And I began that sort of traditional trajectory of following uh, uh, following, uh, uh, you know, clubs and cafes, doing those shows, the clubs and cafes, traveling and selling my CDs. And remember those? Remember yeah, CDs, y'all? Yeah. I don't know. I don't, you know, what I, mean? I don't know. How, I don't know how young y'all are. You know what I'm saying? But but back in the day, we had these things that were small records. Is what my what my fifth grade students used to say. Oh, you mean those things that are like big old, like they're like small records? Yeah, that's those. So we had CDs and we'd be selling them selling all our CDs, but I just felt like there's got to be something else that we can do besides club shows and college shows. And that's what pushed me into the business industry and me saying, all right, let me let me kick open some doors in the business world. They're just missing spoken word. They think spoken word is only the thing for the Christmas, ho the, the Christmas or holiday party. Let me let them know spoken word belongs at the leadership meeting that belongs at your at your 18,000 member, you know, uh, conference in the stadium. Spoken word belongs there and, and it's valuable there. But I got all the all the friction and all the shade in the world until I actually was able to show them that it did. And the same thing with with the music industry, you know, like with the with the uh, with my last album and kicking doors open in the, in the Grammys and so forth. Like I've just always been constantly trying to to kick open doors to build an industry for our art form. And that's what led me to create Poetic Voice as a speaking category. The definition of Poetic Voice is it is a seamless blend of inspirational speaking and spoken word poetry. Seamless blend. So you don't really know where one ends and the next begins. And you, one minute it feels like a TED talk. The next minute it feels like a, a, a story. The next minute it feels like Hamilton. The next minute it feels like comedy. The next minute it feels like thought leadership. And it just creates this constant effect of leaning in for 30, 45, 60, 90 minutes, um, the same length of a keynote, but it's like a keynote being performed. And I wanted to create that effect. And that was new for the speaking industry. And so that's really what led me to, to, to carve that new space in this world by bringing the performance mindset to a public speaking stage to create a new experience for an audience. You, you know, I love how you mentioned that and I love how you, you created that. And I know you teach these skills, which we we'll get into as well. You teach folks how they can take their message and add not only the storytelling component, not only the poetic component, but also poet the component would become a performance as well. And in fact, um, I know you were um, recently in Forbes 2020, by the way, this year. And one mm -hmm. of the things I admired in there is one of the ideas and concepts, and I don't know if you have time to talk about it, hopefully you'll mention it, was number one, and you said it's, it's about, you said innovation starts with and over or. Uh, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me say that a little slower for those folks that mm -hmm. are watching. I want you to listen very carefully. He says that innovation starts with and over or unpackage that for us if you will for a moment and why that's important how that relates to us so how the phrase started with me in terms of what i innovated with poetic voice was the world kept asking me are you a performer or a presenter which are you and my answer was always yeah <laughs> you got it. Well, no, are you are you an entertainer or are you a speaker? Yep. Right. And so that that was that was and still continues to be the biggest challenge with that people have in understanding what it is that I do is that they're used to those boxes, those labels we talked about earlier in the green room. Right. They're used to needing to categorize you to understand you. And I told them I was trying to create an experience that they were not used to, that they were not accustomed to, but that they would be better for. Right. I kept looking and saying, you got this this pattern of speaker and speaker and speaker. And then what do you see after that at an event? An artist, mm -hmm. a singer, songwriter, uh, a, a dancer, a comedian, somebody that does what? They're meant to lift the spirits 
you know, raise the energy of the room after the energy has been brought down by the speakers and all the cerebral content. And then they're meant to lift that energy back up, up and crack that audience open so that they're ready to receive the content from the next speaker and speaker and speaker. And I found myself asking a pivotal question. If art is so powerful, if art makes content so sticky and moving and memorable, then why is art being used as the break from the content instead of the vehicle for the content? And that was the sort of aha pivot moment when I said, okay, well, wait a minute, we've been doing this all wrong. I'm gonna tell people they don't have to have an opening performer and, or an opening video, and then an opening performer, and then the uh, executive inside of the company that gives the corporate message, and then the keynote speaker that gives the thought leadership. What if we can create that all in one? And the industry kept saying, no, you have to be this or that. And so for me, innovation began in saying, no, it's not up, stop telling me that I have to exist in or. I'm allergic to the word or. I'm gonna create a, a fusion of these experiences. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm a live in the space of and, right? And to me, and that's why it is that I wanted to create it. That's why I say seamless is so important for you understanding what poetic voice is. Because I'm not the only poet who's a speaker. I'm not the only performer who's a speaker. There are plenty of, 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 of performers who, who speak and what they do typically is they perform and then you applaud and then they speak. And then they set up the next performance, they perform, you applaud and they speak. And I wanted to create an experience where you just didn't know where one ends and the next begins. Why? Because that's one of the most important things that, that a, any public speaker, I don't care if you're a main stage public speaker, you're speaking to your staff, you're in a job interview, or you're talking to your kids, any public speaker, no matter what your stage is, one of the things you're trying to do is engage your audience. And engagement, engagement is, is 10, 20, 30 cumulative little acts that you, that you use to create a lean-in effect with your audience, right? So we know what disengagement looks like. It looks like this. It looks like this. I'm on my phone, I'm checked out. It looks like this. And we know what engagement looks like. It looks like this. And so you're doing, you, what you want to do as a presenter is you want to, every time they go, okay, I got where you're going, cool, I'm checking out. Oh, wait, no, didn't expect that. Okay, yeah, I understand where he's going. Oh, wait, hold on, didn't expect that. Anyway, what were you saying, homie? I wanted, oh, wait, hold on, don't talk to me. I want to hear what this is about to happen. You know, and you you want to constantly create these lean-in effects. Well, performers know that. A lot of times speakers don't think about it like that. And so that's what I wanted to do with Poetic Voice was make it seamless so that I didn't announce to you when there was going to be a change. Suddenly the change is happening and you're going, oh, there's something new here. I need to check in. And that's really what Poetic Voice is and why it ends up being um, so phenomenally successful with, with every industry out there. I'm not the dude that does social media five days a week or talks about empowering change five days a week or talks to the tech industry five days a week. I'm the dude that's talking diabetes on Monday and cloud computing on Tuesday and Wednesday uh, is women's shoes and Thursday is education and Friday is healthcare. Like I'm all of these industries looking for the underlying human themes that I can bring out to show them the best version of themselves through this new form of communication. You know, I love it. Um, we're going to take a commercial in just a few minutes. I want to sh share something with you. Let me know where you want to go. But before, yeah. before we do that, I want to make a point that you do teach these skills, not only yeah. in the corporate side, not only for managers and also for leaders, which you're going to get into a little, a little late on. So you're not only just doing it, but your organization teaches folks how they can add this component to what they're already doing. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, absolutely. And that's one of the things that we're doing, um, you know, in particular right now, because the world has gone virtual, right? I mean, this is the, the this is the space that we're in, these webcams, these phone cams. Um, and what, I, what I'm trying to make sure that I'm imparting to the world, everybody's making the virtual pivot right now, but the virtual pivot for us is not anything new. We've, I built my business doing digital content, doing, uh, videos for folks, creating customized messages that were sent out to employees, to workforce, to, to customers, to inspire them in a way they weren't expecting. Uh, and so this is just, for us, it's just returning to, you know, first riding a bike, it's returning to our roots and saying, we've been inspiring folks in this digital space since day one. And, and now you have to inspire folks in this digital space. The, 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 the key message that I'm trying to make sure that everyone understands, and I want you to hear me clearly, if you take away nothing else from this interview, Take this away. No matter what business you were in, you are in the inspiration business. If you're a leader, if you're a communicator, if you're an influencer in any way, you are also in the inspiration 
business. And those of us that are in the business of inspiration now have to figure out how to inspire people in a digital space, in the cold, flat, two-dimensional uh, uh, you know, cyberspace of, of webcams and digital cameras and so forth. And it's, and it's different. It's, it's challenging. You don't have the same human contact. You don't have the same give and take. You don't have the same call and response. It's different. And, but you have to learn how to engage in this digital space. And when you do, not only will you inspire the things that you need to inspire right now, like productivity in your workforce, loyalty with your customers, commitment from your community, all those things that you need when people are surrounded by distractions and loss and fears and pain and anxiety, you've got to be able to cut through all of that to deliver messages that make them pay attention, that make them lean in. Not only will you be stronger in this, but again, you will be stronger coming out of this because the world is not going to be the same coming out of this. The world was already going digital. The world was already going virtual. This just catalyzed it. This was just an enzyme. So now when we come out of this, the world is going to be that much more virtual and digital, which means these are skills that are going to make you valuable moving forward. And that's the message that we are communicating to leaders is be inspiring, be inspiring in this digital space and know that you're not alone. Like we're here to help. We got lots of ways that we can help you. Yeah, I love it. I love it, man. I'm going to take a quick Quick uh, commercial, maybe about a minute or two. We'll be right back. Um, do you right. want me? You want, want me to go to the creative right now? Creative content or digital video? Uh, why don't you go to digital video? All man. right, I'm, I'm yeah, gonna give you guys an example of what Seku's talking about. When we come back. I'm gonna ask them to kind of talk about when someone says that's not how it's done. Lean in. Hmm. Hmm. Well, we're gonna figure it out when we when we get back. By the way, because uh, sometimes you got to pull from outside the field. We're gonna give you an opportunity and let Seiko kind of go a little bit further. Do me a favor for those folks that are out there, hit the share button. And when you hit the share button, this time write you are awesome. Hashtag Seiko Andrews. Let someone else know they're awesome. You talked about your being awesome. Now you're gonna bless someone else and let them know that they're awesome. You're gonna plant that on their sub conscious mind. Seku didn't show up today and ask for any cash app payment. He didn't say Wait, I have to I'm have not getting paid for this? anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say that. He didn't say wire me some money. He said, Shay, I'm all in. I'm all in. So we're going to make sure that we do that, by the way. Um, let me now go to commercial. Hit the share button. Hit the share button. Um, we believe in the giver's economy. The person out gives the competition out earns the competition. The person out gives the competition, out earns the competition. And someone needs to hear this message now more than ever. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Let's go see what Seku Andrew has to say. And so our decade of significance begins. It's our time to retail the tale of retail, where attention to detail and service prevail, enhancing each sale of the products we sell, and we won't be derailed from the future we hail, for we fail to sit down and take the future. No, we stand up and make the future. Join hands and shape the future. We are not done yet. We are still on the quest to grow the amounts of data that we can digest to expedite our best, to perfect the kind of catalyst that we can add to our process that quicken our success and accelerate our next. -E because next will be here faster than you can count to three. So add your voice to the story of this new company. Because if next is the goal to reach, then now is the time to seize. Which is why my answer to the question, why you, is simple. Because you live what you do. You don't just restructure finances to ensure success for other people. No, no, no. You're restructuring your people to ensure your financial success. Are you listening to this? You're making sure that both of us get that long money. That lasting longer than an LED light bulb. Long money. That stretch limo rented on my 100th birthday. Long money. That law and order season 94, Mariska Hargitay. Long money. Health means well. And wellness is certainly well-meaning. But only purpose has the means to get me to well-being. It is possibility in a pocket. It's purpose in a purse. It doesn't show me the finish line without showing the steps first. Purpose is the point that gives your life exclamation. And this is more than just the theory of purpose. This is the application. I'm 
staging a digital takeover of the way you now transact. I give a little pay it forward, you give a little pay it back. I discovered how truly great I am. And I am not perfect, but I'm perfect as I am. I'm not beautiful like I used to be. I'm beautiful like I am, like the scar where a breast once was, like survival where a death once was, like the better where a best once was. Every gray hair, a trophy. Every wrinkled fold, a story. Every pound of fat, a challenge. Reminding me there is always something to pursue and always something to celebrate. <laughs> we got hard work ahead. We got a decade to own, but we're all family here now. No one's in this alone. Plus, we got company coming, folks, so let's ready our home. Next solam carpe diem deus creare. Meaning, we do seize the day, but we don't stop there. We digitize the day and socialize the day and revolutionize the day and mobilize the day. We make the day. Then we make the day go. Then we make the day go. www.sekuandrews.com. It is showtime. Seku, take a moment as they were watching that and saying it's time to digitize. It's time to make that happen. It's time to do that. Many folks have shared this message for it. We want to say thank you. We want to let you know we appreciate you. Thank you for sharing with the community. It means so much. And those who hit the heart button, thank you so much. For those who just hit the like button, Thank you. For those that just even following the show, we appreciate you. Uh, Seiko Andrews, who's in overtime, by the way, he just does his own thing, by the way. The, the whole the whole thing has gone out the map, but I just love Seiko. Uh, <laughs> and I should have known it's going to be disruptive, but that's just what he does. But It's what I do, baby. Come on. <laughs> I know who you're bringing on to your show now. Come on. <laughs> yeah, we've we've never had a show like this, ladies and gentlemen. I know y'all said, what is going on? This is so different. Well, it's Seku Andrews. This is what he does at companies. This is what he does on stages. Take a moment, if you will, and, and, and let's slow down and then we'll speed up. I want to give maybe two or three golden nuggets that they can use. And you were, I was talking for a moment or a moment ago about when someone says that's not how it's done. And I heard that for a long time. Shay. Folks don't really connect online. That's not how it's done. Shay, they can't sell online. That's not how it's done. I, how can I be a speaker and impact a corporation and I'm not there and I don't touch them? But you have a philosophy. When someone says that's not, that's not how it's done, then lean in. Talk a little bit about that. So you, my hope is that I'm approaching a lot of these questions and these topics from a lot of different perspectives, but that you're that you guys out there are hearing the the commonalities, and then that you're hearing the thread and the theme, because you're going to constantly hear me come back to mindset. You're going to constantly hear me come back to defying convention. You're going to constantly hear me come back to creating uh, what's possible, reimagining what's possible. Right? These are the tenets of of what I believe, um, and these are the tenets of what I believe can make a uh, happy entrepreneur. In, in terms of uh, owning your space, expressing your indiv individuality, embracing your autonomy, right? Creating that passionate and, and powerful and profitable you. The, 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 the key word being you, <laughs> most important word in that phrase, you, right? And in order for that to, to exist, then you have to define you for yourself. And what happens is people don't necessarily understand the you that's in your head, which means you have to be the one that is brave enough to show them. You have to be the one that's uh, influ influential enough to express it, to, to, to convert them, to convince them, right? You have to be the one that's that's visionary enough to, to, to see it and, and create that vision for them so that they can see it. All that has to come from you first. So when someone says that this is not possible and you hear me talk about leaning in, you know, if, if, if you are trying to create a new space and and you know one of my one of my quotes that i use all the time in my in my presentations is you know when you get tired of trying to break into the industries of the world it might be time to create your own industry and make the world try to break into you let me say that again when you get tired of trying to break into the industries of the world 
It might be time to create your own industry and make the world try to break into you. And that's, I mean, what are we talking about when we're talking about MLK? What are we talking about when we're talking about Steve Jobs? What are we talking? This is what we're talking about. We're talking about visionaries that said, I know you're telling me this is not how it's done. Watch this. Watch this. And you got to be brave enough to, to, to tell the world, watch this. You've got to be visionary enough to show them what watch this looks like. And you've got to be uh, 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 voiceful enough to be able to galvanize them around that vision so that you can express your most powerful you. So what I so what I talk about in, in leaning in is not fearing, not fearing that version of you just because it doesn't exist out in the world. But lean into it. Right. Embrace it. Welcome it. Um, dance with it. And but but also build your skills. You know, you don't want to be that person that's just out there going, I think it's possible. And then you're you're failing because you didn't build your scale, your sales skills. You didn't build your marketing skills. You didn't build your your influence skills. You didn't build your leadership skills. You didn't build. You didn't surround yourself with the right team that had the strengths where you were weak. Like you got to be smart about it as well. You got to be business savvy about it as well. You got to make sure that you are surrounding yourself with people that are better than you, but who also will help kick open those doors when they close in your face. And when you do that, then you're leaning into the possibility that you see and not the impossibility that others see. You know, I love I love what you're saying. You're spot on target, man. Uh, you bring out the all stars. You got the one and only Dr. George C. Frazier, who's watching right now, by the way. He's yeah. The heart button. He's What's out up, there. Dr. Dr. George C. Frazier. Oh, we see you, good. baby. George, Dr. Dr. Frazier is one of the few folks I know that stays engaged. He's in the digital space. Uh, take a moment, if you would. I'm going to come back to pull from the best forms outside of your field. But take a moment and talk about just the spirit of collaboration. I know that's something that Dr. George C. Frazier is about. You're about. You're collaborating right now. You're bringing your talent and sharing it. Some folks right now are trying to hoard. They got a, they got a, a sense of scarcity. Like, oh, well, I don't want you to know who my people are. And, and I'm going to hold mine over here. But that's not what you said, Sekou, and I called. You said, Shay, I'm there to serve where I could be serving. I know you're answering the call right now for corporations. You're answering for hotel for the hotel industry. You're answering it for those folks that are entrepreneurs, for nonprofits. You're answering the call right now so you can help them when they need it most in this digital space. Take a moment or two and talk about the spirit of collaboration. And Dr. Joyce C. Frazier, we know you love you, baby. We know you love you. <laughs> Dr. Frazier, what's up, brother? Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, look, okay, you, you, here, I'll give you, I'll give you two, instead of just talking about it generically, I'm gonna give you two stories of collaboration that led to being better than we were alone. Uh, the first, I'm just coming off the power of collaboration. You heard me talk about uh, my, my mission and my purpose, right? If I, if I wasn't clear, my mission and purpose is to help people find their most powerful voice and to create a commercially viable industry for the art of spoken word, whereby poets can make a purposeful and a profitable living off their art. So creating that industry is critical for me, which means I have to be willing to build a model that doesn't exist so that they have something to follow, which means I have to be the first one, I have to be willing to be the first one to kick open those doors. And one of those doors that I just kicked open that you heard me reference recently was in the music industry, which is where I started. And when I moved to poetry, it was sort of like saying, I'm going to, you know, by moving to poetry, I'm giving up the possibility of getting a Grammy. I'm giving up the possibility of having a platinum record. I'm giving these things up because poetry doesn't have the industry to support them. But as I began pursuing this mission, I found myself, well, why do we have to give that up? Why can't we have that as well? Poets don't believe that they can win spoken word poets in particular. A lot of them don't believe that they can win a spoken word Grammy because the category has been ruled by audiobooks for the past 30 years, with the only exceptions being uh, Dr. Angel, Dr. Maya Angelou, who won uh, about 12 years ago, and Nikki Giovanni, who was nominated uh, about 17 years ago. Both of them amazing poets, but I don't think either of them identify as necessarily spoken word poets, right? They, had, they were literary poets that had books. They might have read them, but they were literary poets with books of poetry. We spoken word poets that release albums that are on, you know, on par with music artists and so forth, we don't get access to this category. We have not been winning it. Audio books means we're always competing against a president or a giant publisher or celebrity. Past 30 years. So suddenly I said, you know what? I'm releasing an album next uh, this past year, 2019. And I think that this album um, is going to be Grammy, Grammy, Grammy caliber. 
And the album was a collaborative effort. It was my spoken word poetry with the wackiest of collaborations, a, a neoclassical symphony orchestra out of uh, Europe, out of Berlin and Sweden. And we partnered to create an album that was bigger than either of us could have imagined, bigger than most of our audience imagined. And I told them we're going after a Grammy. And I pursued it and I campaigned for it. And last, you know, this past January, I became the first spoken word poet to receive the best spoken word album Grammy nomination in about 30 years. Now, I got the, I you can't just uh, leave uh, them out there. Them. Look, for those folks that are out there, look below the video and say, congratulations. Say, great job, Seku. Say, great job, that. Seku. He's very humble when he's doing this, by the way. You heard him just drop that. I'm the first one ever to get this thing done over here. But he's Grammy nominated. This is, this is, this is huge. This is yeah. huge. This is huge. It's, it's, a, it's a massive So honor, give him a little I'll digital you, applause. Give point. him a little digital applause. To your, to your point, though, Che, yeah. the biggest honor for me, uh, it's, a, it's an honor for me as a, sure. as a recording artist, because every recorded artist wants this. It's one of the highest, artists, highest honors you can get in music. But the biggest honor for me was the poets that were hitting me up afterwards saying, thank you for this. Like, uh, we didn't think that we had access to this. We didn't think that this could be ours. Thank you for showing us that this was possible. Right. That was what gave me goosebumps. That's what made me feel like, all right, God, I'm on purpose right now. So that and that came through a collaborative effort to say, I'm going to show the world the best of what I do. I'm going to partner with you amazing creative musicians called the String Theory to part uh, to uh, to uh, you guys show the best of what it is that you do. And let's create something that is bigger than either one of us. And that's a great example of how collaboration can lead to huge wins. And then the last one I'm going to leave you with. Is something that's closer to home for you. Uh, when I created my stage mic program yeah. about six years ago, my stage mic uh, speaker training program, mm -hmm. that's Rockstar Secrets for Public Speakers. Um, I was deciding that I wanted to create a program that was bringing performance techniques to public speaking stages. I was new to the to the the, the cell from the stage platform, the platform stages, et cetera, et cetera. I was more corporate stages, and <clears throat> so I was. I had no no muscles, right? I had no habits, no no. No sense of this wasn't in my wheelhouse to actually stand on stage and figure out how to sell and do offers and all of that, right? And I did this platforms of, of stages. I mean, uh, sorry, the summer of platforms um, mm -hmm. that was four stages. One of them uh, uh, was um, California Women's Conference, Power Networking, shout out Dr. Frazier, uh, Oregon Women's Conference, and E Women Conference. Mm -hmm. And the first two or three, I was just failing. I wasn't. I wasn't selling. I wasn't I wasn't making my sales. Right. This is the first time I had a program to sell. But I was so used to just getting up there and inspiring that I hadn't really been building my sales muscles. Now, what was getting stronger every time was my PayPal swiper game was getting on point, son. My exhibit booth game was tight. Woo! You couldn't mess with me in the exhibit booth game. My, you know, all of the, the infrastructure around me was being built up because I was thinking that's what I needed to do to have successful sales. But the one thing that I wasn't working on was me. I hadn't worked on simply my ability to be the face, the voice of my product, of my offering, of my company. And I and it wasn't until the last night before eWomen that I, I realized that. And I was like, you've been working on everything but you. And I panicked. And what did I do? I didn't try to figure out myself. I, I always say you want to be the best. You surround yourself with the best. I had met uh, Che at Power Networking and he connected with me. He was like, whatever you need, brother, let me know. And we we bonded. And so I called him up like 11 o'clock at night. Right. It was crazy. I called him up and I was like, yo, I, I need some I need some sales mindset. I need to get myself in the right sales mindset. Che picked up the phone without blinking, started running down. OK, boom, here's what I want you to do. Here's some five steps, seven steps. Here's my process. I want you to take my process and make it yours. And I became a student. The last night, the, in the last hour, that final hour, and from, from then to about three in the morning, and then I woke up at you know seven in the morning on four hours of sleep, and I went and I did my keynote. I did exactly what I was instructed to do, but I changed it and made it my own, added my own poetic voice and innovation to it, and I filled up my breakout session. I had the, the most packed breakout session of the whole conference, and then um, I did my did my uh, my breakout and I did the the the, the trait the, the the che technique that he told me <laughs> and by the before I actually even finished the sentence in giving my offer it, I hadn't even said what the price was yet I just did the here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna make an offer for the first 20 people that and before I could finish the sentence 
30 people jumped up and ran to the back of the room. They didn't know what I was selling. They didn't know what I was doing. They didn't know what the price was going to be. But I had set it up so well because I stopped working on everything else around me. I, I, I collaborated with someone that was better than me and I worked on myself and it led to a greater version of me. That's the power of collaboration right there. Wow. Very powerful, man. Thank you so much. That's the first time I no, heard. Thank the, you the for story. that, brother. Yeah. Thank you for that. Thank, you, Thank you for that. Thank Truly. You. I tell and I and I'm, I'm surprised that you're right. I haven't really told you that. Yes, story, it's the first time. I do, ladies and gentlemen, the first I time I'm hearing this. Story. This is good. I tell that story to other people all the time and giving you props for that. So I appreciate you for that. Thank you, man. I appreciate you, brother. You're you're rocking out. Um, you got folks making comments down there. Um, we're gonna take a commercial in a moment. I don't know which one you want me to play. There may be another one I want to share something with them. Because I know I want to talk about two things that are important. You're in overtime, by the way. You just been going. But we want to talk about how to insist on a story. And, and I want to do that because I know you teach folks how to do that and also how to remember that you are the inspiration in your business. And we got to get that in before our time. You got to talk about you yeah. are the inspiration in your business because you're doing that with leaders. You're doing that with folks who are in government. You're doing that right now with small business owners. And right now, through the power of these fiber optic lines right now, you are letting folks know that you are the inspiration for your business. Is there one you want me to show, man, before we before we take a break in just a second? Um, why don't you show? Why don't you show <laughs> you uh, digital wait. ads? Why don't you show commercial digital ads? Um, okay. Because what I'm doing, just so you know, you know, yeah, as frame, I'm telling frame, people, frame the conversation for them. Yeah. Because we're going to take yeah. a break, and we come back in probably less than two minutes. Uh, Seiko is going to talk about two things: insist on a story, and don't worry, I'm going to get. Remember, you're the inspiration in the business. Don't worry about that. We ain't going to let them get off with that. That. But Good. frame the conversation about what they're about to see, if you would. And y'all don't want to miss this. And before you do that, if you haven't hit the share button and paid this message forward, hit the share button now. Hit the, hit, hit the watch party button right now. Because Seiko is just giving. He's not here to try to sell you. He's not here to try to force you to do anything. He's here to serve. And some of you are in organizations. Some of you are in the faith-based community. Some of you are part of virtual summits that are going on. Some of you right now are doing webinars. Some of you are, are looking to bring someone like this to your organization. And Seiko not only has pivoted, but he's doing it in the space now and has been doing it prior to now. So with that being said, that's what I want them to let them know, man. Go ahead and yeah. frame what they're about to look at, please. We're going to no, do commercial I'm glad ads. you said that because this is not what I'm showing. You guys might be used to somebody showing you, hey, here's what I can do for you, right? And the stuff that I'm showing you is not what I can do for you. The stuff I'm telling you is the stuff that I want you to be able to learn from, to grow you and so forth. But the stuff I'm showing you is what I'm doing for my clients to let you know what you can be doing for your clients and for your customers. It's just a way of you expanding the way that you think. And so I'm not, I'm showing you samples of the things that, I'm doing to my clients. I'm going to my clients and my in the business world out there, and I'm saying, listen, the 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 live events have been canceled. The, the g gatherings have been canceled. But what was the point of the gathering? What was the point of the live event? The live event was just the vehicle to deliver inspiration. The gathering was bringing people together for the purpose of creating a sense of togetherness. And that sense of togetherness is still mandatory. That inspiration is still needed. So let's figure out a different vehicle to deliver that inspiration. And that landing page that, that Shay is referring to is where I'm sending my clients now to say, take a look. Here's how we can do this through digital videos. Here's how we can do this through voiceover. Here's how we can do this through con creative content. Here's how we can do this through things like commencement speeches, right? I'm going to my clients and saying, look, I, you have to celebrate your graduates. Those graduates, those graduates worked hard. Yeah. And this is commencement speech, speech season, right? So I'm typically getting booked for commencement speeches. Well, we don't have to not celebrate our graduates. We just have to figure out how to do it digitally. So I can, I can create short 10-minute digital videos that are engaging and fun and get them jumping up in their seats in their living rooms with their families, celebrating all the hard the work that they did to walk across that stage, even if that walk is through their living room right now in this crisis. We will not sacrifice the inspiration. The inspiration is not canceled. And so what you're seeing now is an example. I think I said the commercial digital yep. ads yep. is an example of saying, hey, let's get some of these digital ads out there. May not be grand campaign, com uh, big ca commercial campaigns, but we can get them in front of their computers in ways that are just creative and still inspire them to invest in themselves or to grow their business or whatever it is. So that's what you're watching right now. It's just a, a reel of some of the creative Poetic voice digital ads that I've created for companies. You know, I I love I love what you're doing. Let's let's go ahead. Let's get that queued up. We'll be back in less than two minutes. We're going to it right now. 
I was gonna say, I don't have the support to go back to school, but then I found the school that gave me the team who stayed beside me all the way to my dream of changing life for the better. And all I had to do was type three letters, W-G-U. The term baller has officially been redefined. I want warriors. Born with battle stars who play eager to bleed. Gladiators who only know passion, hunger. Are you ready for battle? Unlock my phone to unlock my mind. I power up my tablet to empower my future. I open my laptop, see the end of my tunnel, and chase that light. And I choose to change my mind knowing that choice will change my life. In the game of life, this young man will face many opponents. Most will fall before him. One still stands within him. So he, in armor that bears the letters L, B, J, must take knights and storm castles to face his own potential and claim his king within and checkmate go through the halls of Hoop Town. I don't need a school to just promise me the tools for change. I need a school to put those tools within reach. You give me a sledgehammer I can afford and I will break through every barrier. You give me the shoes that fit my life and I will outrun every excuse because I got the capability. I just need the community. I got the talent, I just need the opportunity. I can find my way through darkness. Just give me one North Star. Just give me the hand I need to loosen up the jaw. Look, I know school will be hard, but I'm strong enough to fight for change. I just need the kind of school that gives me a fighting chance. Welcome back to the Happy Entrepreneur Show. You just watched the one and only Sekou demonstrate exactly what you can do in this digital space, which is super powerful. But he did something in there that was, um, I think, different and unique. And that is how he weaves storytelling through there. And before we left, I, I promised them that you would share a little bit about how to assist on a story as part of what they're doing. Um, I yep. know we they just watched it. We just unpacked it for them. Let me step back and not talk about the power of storytelling, but you say insist on the story. Talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if you remember in, in the green room, um, we talked, we talked a bit about people saying that they are, are not storytellers, <laughs> yes. um, you know, and I don't know how many of you guys, if you guys have, have ever heard that or ever said that, you know, make sure you put that in the, in the chat as well um, and let us know what that challenge has been. Because a lot of times it's a mindset that we've we've allowed ourselves as adults to believe, to value information over inspiration, right? We've allowed ourselves to value, to value the data over the story. And what I have, what I do in my storytelling trainings and my speaker trainings in, st in the stage might system is to, uh, is to reverse that is to get people to first insist that the, that the story has to be told and find the delicious, engaging, moving, funny, tender stories that just create a human connection. Then you can figure out how to get the data into any of those stories. And when you do that, what you do is you create, you make the data unrecognizable, but unmissable. Let me say that again. When you tell, when you embed data into the story, you make the data unrecognizable, but unmissable. As it's coming to me in the story, I'm not recognizing that I'm receiving data and information and everything that you're teaching. But by the time you finish with the story, the data and the information and what I learned is unmissable. I've got it. 100%. But now I've internalized it in a way that's more human. It means something more to me. It's personal. It made me think of my business. It made me think of my fears. It made me think of my struggles. It made me think of my family because you put it in story form. So now the meaning behind the data is that much more effective. And you that's that's how you can convert people with sales, convert people with marketing, et cetera, et cetera. So that's why I always tell people, 
Make sure that you are insisting on telling the story and figure out how to get that information in there. And there are very specific techniques that you can learn that I teach all the time in my trainings that help people to, to, to create stories that are powerful in short amounts of time, to create stories that are powerful on a digital in, in a digital space like this, to create stories that are powerful for large audiences and small audiences, large stages and small stages. No matter what your stage is, I can teach you to be mighty on that stage. I don't care if it's your, you're a dentist. I don't care if it's your, you're a parent. I don't care if it's you know that you're 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 an executive, a leader of any kind. You have a voice. You have a stage, and you can be mighty on that stage. But you have to insist on story. I love it, man. I, I love how you broke that down. You made it really, really simple, which is insist on a story and how mm -hmm. to tell the story. You know, when you were um, one of the things, a question came out. I was trying to go through the feed. There's so many folks. Thank you all for your questions. You guys are just wonderful. Um, he's like in double overtime now. I don't think he knows this. He's like in double overtime, but this is what he loves, man. He lives for this moment. He was built I look, to I, be look, here. It's a, it's a Saturday. It's a Saturday. I'm here at home, and you asked me on my weekend to come pour into people. So I'm pouring, baby. This is what we, this is what we gonna do with our weekend. I'm a pour. I'm a give until you say cut. He's <laughs> so silly. You know, there, there was a question that, that came in. There's a lot of questions. And one of them from Dr. George C. Frazier was, um, what is your routine like now? Um, you know, that was one of the questions I saw of so many, which is, you know, with the world changing, with what's going on now, spending more time being safe, not stuck, but safe at home. What is a, a typical routine day, if you even have those, for Seku right now to, one, keep him focused, keep him motivated, keep him empowered? Yeah. That's a great question, Dr. Fraser. And um, I, yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> that routine is more important than ever and more difficult than ever. Um, the first thing I would say to make it really short and powerful for you is that I just uh, I just put a video on my social media. So make sure you you uh, connect with me on LinkedIn at Seku Andrews on LinkedIn. Make sure you uh, follow me on IG, on Instagram uh, at Seku World. And you will see a video that we just posted. That's a clip of me talking about the power of your morning routine that I just de uh, delivered for a couple thousand folks at a, at a, at a keynote. Um, and I talk about the in, about being intentional in what you take in in the morning, right? So you, I, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time giving you the specifics of the routine because I want you to go to that video and watch that. You know, yes, make sure that you're, you know. Getting, taking care of yourself physically. Make sure you're taking care of yourself mentally. Make sure you're taking care of yourself emotionally and spiritually. Um, but the, the, the point of it is to be mindful and intentional with what you're allowing into your space, what you're taking in, right? So you can make the choice to let the first thing you do be to pick up your phone and take in all the problems and emergencies. Somebody's texting you, I can't believe it. Somebody's emailing you, we need this now. Somebody's saying there's a problem, right? And now suddenly that's the first thing you've taken in is this sense of heightened emergency and urgency and so forth. Well, of course, that's going to instantly raise your stress level. Or you can make the choice to say, no, I'm going to take in that kiss to my wife first. I'm going to take in some playtime with my kids first. I'm going to take in, uh, uh, you know, I'm going to hydrate and take in that that uh, some some prayer. Or I'm going to take in some meditation. I'm going to be intentional on what it and how it is that I prime my day for success so that my day does not happen to me. I get to happen to my day. So I think that's more important now in this situation than ever because we're off our routine. So we're having to create new routines. I call it my PDM, my personal daily maintenance. Right. So we have to create new PDMs uh, for ourselves that exist in this space. Suddenly I don't have the place that I could go away to because everybody's here in my house. Suddenly I, don't I can't go to that to that gym that I have to. So I have to figure out working out in my house. So we have to figure out what is the intention and what's the alternative workaround that we can still use to create that same intention so that we're uh, being mindful of what we're taking in. And that is important. So use your use your routine. Take your routine seriously. I love it. I love it, man. You're bringing out the all-stars. Andy Harikas is out there, by the way. Kevin Goins is out there. Crystal Cunningham. Yeah, yeah. Sunshine's out there. Julie's out there. Jose's out there. Dr. Kim Warren Martin. So many folks that are tuning in right now. But I want to get to the question of the question of the question. And for those folks out there, if you haven't hit the watch party button, please hit it. Because he's going to talk about, remember, you, you are the inspiration in your business in just a second. So hit the watch party button. Hit the share button. When you hit that share button, because you're going you're gonna to bless another entrepreneur, you're going to bless another small business owner, you're going to be able to pay that message forward 
And this is the time they need to hear it more than ever. So we want to thank you so much. So say cool. Uh, the, the moment that I've been waiting for, doo -doo -doo -doo, but he's had so many moments. I didn't know what's going to happen. <laughs> Why should I expect something different? But in all seriousness, talk, take a moment, talk about, remember you are the inspiration in your business. Um, yeah. Why not? It, it's, you are the inspiration of your business and you are in the inspiration business. Right. And that's what I want you to, to make sure you remember. I'm, I'm working on a book. I've been I've been working on my book in heavy air quotes for uh, the past uh, <laughs> past four years. Welcome to the club. Um, <laughs> anybody anybody else been working on your book forever? Uh, you know, you can text, put that in the comments too. shout me out so that I know I'm not alone in the world because I've been saying I'm working on this book and I can't even say it without laughing. But. I think this is going to be the year because we got this virus now. We got the pandemic. I'm at home and I'm invested in myself and my own creativity. So hopefully this will uh, this will be the year that the book comes out. But it is a book on the power of inspiration. And one of the um, primary things I teach in it is that you are in the inspiration business, no matter what business that you're in. And um, and I think that that's important for you to remember because you have to you have to use that in two ways. You have to you have to use that to lead an inspired life. You have to learn how to be inspired and stay inspired in your life. And you have to learn how to be inspiring to others. Right. And when you do that, you take you make the information that you're del that you're delivering uh, stickier, more moving, more memorable. Uh, it more internalized for your audience. Right. And that is so, 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 so important right now that that, that people remember that more than ever, we need inspiration because it's not just, oh, I go to my work and I'm in my routine and I just have to stay productive in the ways that I used to be able to stay productive. Now I got to as, as an employee of a company, if I'm working remotely, I've got to figure out how to stay productive when my kids are playing right there and my spouse is, is you know, at, at the other end of the table in a, in a meeting and, and my teenager is screaming at us because she's frustrated with homeschooling and, and the TV is on every room bla blasting the news and the and, and, and somebody's, you know, coughing and quarantined over in another room. And my, my, my grandmother is calling me or my parent is calling me every every two hours. Well, baby, are you OK? I'm so worried about the world. And, and it's just distraction and, and worry and fear. And somebody and, and one of our neighbors just caught it and is in the hospital. And one of the members of our church is 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 sick. And when somebody in, in our family just passed away and there's there's loss, there's we have to cancel our wedding. There's we can't have uncle's funeral right now. There's there's my my kid is actually starting to cough and saying that he can't like it's it's it, it's humanity it's our humanity coming avalanching down into our workspace right and and that's what we have to that's what we're trying to fight off when we're trying to do that and still keep our job by showing our boss yeah i'm gonna make that deadline and don't worry i'm still gonna provide excellence and don't worry like all of that is what we're dealing with and and so i feel like that's why people say when I'm talking to to executives and, and business leaders and so forth, um, even entrepreneurs who have team members, that it's important that we remember that we it's not just enough to give them the information. Here's what's going to happen with your job. Here's what, what's going on with the Small Business Association loan. Here's what's happening with unemployment. Here's what's going on with the health insurance. That, that's great. That's the survival stuff. And they got to get that. They have to have that. That's 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 the priority for them. But the moment that that settles, that that dust settles, they're going to be in such a vacuum if they're not already. They're going to be so depleted and so stressed and so empty from all of that, from the information of all of this, that they're that they're going to need a, 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 a they're going to need a defibrillator. And and your inspiration, your ability to be inspiring, not just not just tell them what to do, but to inspire them in what to do. That becomes critical. You become that defibrillator that is saying, OK, you got all that. You're clear on all that. We're clear. OK, now clear and jolt them back to life. Oh, OK, now I'm ready. Now I believe. Now I found joy. Now I can conquer this. Now I believe in myself. Now I know that I have purpose in this. Now I know this is the place that I'm supposed to be. This is not happening to me. This is happening for me. In the words of my friend, Sean Stevenson, like this is I got this. I got this. I am possible. It's no longer impossible. It's I'm possible. 
And you have the ability to add that apostrophe into the word impossible to inspire I'm possible. And you have to train yourself to that, to do that. And you have to believe that that is your business. You have to see that that is necessary. So that's why I say that you're in the inspiration business. That's what I'm helping my, my clients to do for their communities, for their workforces, for their members, uh, and, and for their customers. And that's what you must do as an entrepreneur for yourself first, be inspired. And then for whoever it is that is in your sphere of influence, be inspiring. Be inspiring. I love it. Be inspiring. You know, before we go to the next segment, I know I have something else queued up, creative content. I want to you know I got that to the side. That's the last one I have. But it's yeah, and we, it's don't have to, that, that's, we don't have to show that. Trey. Yeah, no, you know, no, I know that's what it's, so it's, it's, it's in the queue when it's ready. Um, what, I, what I wanted, so it's in the queue. So we can get to it later when you frame it. Just know it's in the queue. Um, okay. One of the things that I, I would like to do for um, those folks that are out there, um, Seku, is we have this personal mantra. Um, it's our mm-hmm. core belief. I don't know if I told you, it's our core belief here at the Happy Entrepreneur Show, which is today is my January 1st. And for those folks that are hearing it for the first time, I'll frame the conversation. And for those that know what it is, and you believe today is your January 1st, you can go and look right below the video and put today is my January 1st. But Seku, today is my January 1st represents that moment. And there's so many moments throughout the day where you either you make a decision and that decision could forever change the trajectory of your life, right? So you yep. either work out at home or you sit on the couch. Um, you either eat hamburgers and french fries or you go to the refrigerator and you open up and there's some kale, there's some broccoli, there's some Brussels sprouts, there's some celery. That sounds good to somebody right now and I know right away. So it's a do over, it's another chance, it's your past doesn't equal your future. And so when yep. you hear those words, here's my question for Seiko Andrew. When you hear those words, today is my January 1st, what do you hear? What what resonates for you? What does it mean to you? Today is my January 1st. I've, I've, uh, I've answered a lot of these questions in prose. I think this question I'm going to answer in poetry. Okay. And so it is tomorrow again which means I take over my world today. I speak in present tense because these events are in play and well, I can't see it going no other way. And so it is already done. (laughs) The time has already come. I simply think ahead in reverse to see how it will be won, then work back to this moment to 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 from riches to from riches to rags, from 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 cake to crumbs. This story's uh, ending begins when my my, my inner kingdom comes when I reset my, my foresight on a vision that's so precise. I, I create a reality three steps ahead of my life. See, three plays ahead is the only way I play the game. I'm not the small forward or the fast forward. I'm the power forward three frames. I'm not the quarterback or the running back. I'm the coming back to reclaim. I am now able to see the future before it came, meaning I saw the future before it comes, meaning this game will be won in three, split indecision in two, refocus my vision on one, and three choices ago, it was already done. I speak in present tense because these events are in play and I can't see it going no other way. And so my victory has arrived. My fate is finally realized, but only once I expand my possibility size, which can't happen until I keep my eyes locked on the prize. Work back. First, keep my prize up in the skies. Work back. First, keep my skies behind my eyes so that I always remember where God lies from inside. I throttle up my passion, hollow through distractions, follow through with action till tomorrow is what happened. I'm a licensed attorney practicing the laws of attraction. Enter through the jaws of detraction, but exit unscathed. Get better with each day. Improve with each mistake. All that I seek is within my reach. It's already mine to take. Fate is mine to make. No time to wait. Time to break. Time to wake up and find a way. I speak in present tense because these events are in play. And I can't see it going no other way. So that's a little excerpt from my poem, The Fortune Teller. And that's what today is your January 1st means to me. It's you you see that vision 
in the future and you present tense it. You reverse engineer that vision and say, if today is every day is an opportunity for me to reset, then that means every day I'm living, living and straddling the space between past, present and future, which means I have the ability to make my future happen now, but I have to begin now and set my target in the future and reverse engineer that. There's more to that poem. So if you want to hear the rest of that, I will be releasing a video for that poem at some point. Make sure you uh, join my tribe at SekuAndrews.com and sign up for my mailing list and join my groups and I'll be sharing a whole bunch of videos and inspirational content with you. And that'll be one of them. But that's called The Fortune Teller. And I actually, I did do that piece, I, I believe, at Power Networking the very first time. So again, shout out to, to you and Dr. Frazier, which is all what brought us together. Wow, is that, is that just amazing? You know, um, I, I'm curious, you, you work with a lot of companies, you work with entrepreneurs, you work with speakers, authors, trainers, network marketers, uh, influencers. And the question always comes up, a number of folks are writing, today is my January 1st, like Dr. Kim Warren Martin, Sunshine is doing that, Janae is doing that, Avala is doing that. So many folks are doing that right now. What's up, Brandy? Yeah. They're putting today is my January 1st, and they're really excited, just like they were yeah. back on December 31st, after a couple of drinks right. on the back of a napkin, they wrote down their goals, right? And for whatever reason, they fell off track. My, yeah. my question to you is this, um, when you are teaching speakers, um, and they are folks that are communicating, even leaders, how do you teach them to be consistent? You probably heard before that consistency is the key, consistency is the key, consistency is the key. And having said yep. that, most people, myself included, we struggle with consistency. We struggle with hashtag stay the course. So my question to you is, what do you share with folks in order to be consistent on this journey of life and towards doing the impossible? So, you know, we end where we started mindset um consistency is about mindset consistency is about how you are fortifying yourself i mean what what makes you think about this what makes you inconsistent right mm -hmm. um i'm headed here mm -hmm. the only thing that stops me from getting there is something gets in my way something detours me and sends me this way or sends me that way right and so for you, it's easy to let the detour suddenly go, oh, okay, I'm headed here, <laughs> right? And then suddenly something sends you this way and you're like, no, I'm headed here, right? But the target was always here. So for you, your mindset has got to be one that allows you to be focused on where you're going, to maintain that focus and to build the habits that say, I, I can handle the detours. I can handle the disruptions because I'm training myself to have a disruption mindset. That's why... Uh, disruption mindset shift is one of my most popular keynotes across the board. I do this for chambers of commerce. I do it for cybersecurity companies. I do this for the, the world's largest brands in every industry. And they're saying we want that disruption speech because we have people that are so entrenched in, in how it how it is in the, in the current path that they're not able to handle disruption. And as a result, they're running from it. They're scared of it. They're sticking their head in the sand. Well, that's what's happening to the world right now. I know everybody is shell-shocked right now in terms of what do I do with this? And trust me, I'm shell-shocked too, to a certain degree. Absolutely, I'm trying to figure it out. But the one thing I can say that's helping me to keep my mind, to keep my, 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 my sights set on the course is that I have been training myself to have a disruptor's mentality. So when disruption happens, I don't, Fear it. I welcome it. Okay, disruption. This is what you're doing. All right, well, let's go. Oh, that's what you got. I got next. Okay, this is how we're going to get down. Let's dance. And that's the mentality that I have with disruption to say, I knew you were coming. I expected you. You're not surprising me. Now, I'm shocked at how big this is, how epic it is. I wasn't expecting it to show up in this form, but I was expecting it to show up. And so you're not you're not, uh, 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 you know, tearing the fabric of my existence by the fact that change is happening. Let's go. Let's dance. And now, and I'm, I've trained myself to be able to figure it out. So this, so what's happening in the world is not going to take me off target from my goals. I'm simply the same way I told you I had a routine mm -hmm. when I could go out into the world. I'm going to have a routine in the morning when I can't go out into the world. The intention is still there. The routine was simply the, the execution of it. I will execute it differently, but the intention is still there. The same way I told you, you, the, the live gathering, 
the live event was simply the vehicle for inspiration, the intention is still there. We have to inspire the world. So fine, let's dance. Let's find a new way to inspire. But we're not going to lose sight of our target. The same way I'm telling you that you as a leader have got to be influential and you were doing so in person, that intention is still there. you got to influence your staff, your community, your workforce. All right, let's go. Let's figure out some new ways to do that. And so I feel like the more that you have that kind of mindset, it allows you to be able to be consistent to stay consistent in where it is that you were going, what it is that you're supposed to be doing on this planet, what you were put here for, your purpose, because you expected there to be things that try to take you off course. You're not, you're not, that's not a surprise to you. And because you trained yourself to welcome that, to embrace that, to, to manage that, and still stay on course and still get get back to what it is that you're supposed to be doing here. So to me, the last thing I would say in terms of consistency is just go back to making sure that you are taking care of your mindset and everything that you're doing right now and the consistency will come. There's a, again, there's 10, 20, 30 techniques that you, you can go on Google and look up techniques for staying consistent. Doesn't matter if you're not maintaining a mindset of consistency first. Man, I love what you're doing, man. I love your heart to give. I love your heart to serve. Here's what I like to do because I want to want you to frame in a few moments the, the last one of the pieces before we get coming down the home stretch which i've been, <laughs> been doing is the creative content i'm gonna give you a moment to frame that and frame that conversation but before i do that i want to let folks know that are out there um one of the things we're doing say if i mentioned this is that we've been sharing the happy entrepreneur manifesto and, and it's because we realized that some folks throughout the day they need a visual in front of them they need to be able to see something in front of them that allows them to be reminded of the words they need to say throughout the day. And we're on a mission to get this manifesto in front of 10 million, that's right, 10 million entrepreneurs so that they can have the words and the phrases to carry them throughout the day. For those folks that are, are seeing it for the very first time, some of the manifesto we have, which looks just like this, I'm gonna show you how to get it in a moment. But Seku, one of our core beliefs, and that might help you frame up creative content, is that the results that show up in your life are just as important as the results that show up in your bank account. I'm going to say that again. The results that show up in your life are just as important as the results that show up in your bank account. Now, there's someone on here that I really like that I believe spending time with my family is non-negotiable. Uh, I believe that automation is the key to reclaiming my time. This is our gift. This is our big give back. I'm going to share with you guys how you can go get this right now. And then I'm going to ask Seku to talk about the results that show up in your life are just as important as the results show up in your bank account because it is about your life. And then I'm going to ask them to kind of frame the conversation around something that I want you to see as we come down immediately the home stretch in just a second. So you might be wondering, Shay, how do I get the manifesto? It doesn't cost you anything. There's no credit card. There's no swipe and succeed. You just do two things. Do it right now. You can get your mobile phone out now. You open up the messenger side. If you're listening to the podcast, you listen very carefully. If you're watching on Apple TV or Roku or Amazon Fire or YouTube, you can do it as well. But you're going to type the number 202-999-3515. Go ahead and do that right now. Open up your phone and you're going to put 202-999-3515. Text the word manifesto. Text the word manifesto. Once you do that, you'll get an instant response and you can follow the directions. What I'm going to do, and the Seiko is giving so much information. Some of you want to see this again. There's no cost. I'll make sure I send you the link. and You can go watch this a second or third or fourth time, and you can share this with your network. You can take this link and pay it for it. No cost, so they can hear the message from Seiko Andrews himself. Some of you want to connect with him. I'm going to ask him how can you best connect with him. I'm going to ask him what site to go to in just a moment. But I want you to understand the importance of having creative content. I want you to get that because that's something that Seiko does that he's very humble about is he works with entrepreneurs. He works with leaders and helps them not only package their message, but also deliver the message. And that could be to a team of one or a team of many. You're a leader of one before you're a leader of many. So what do you need to do one more time if you're listening and you listen to the podcast, open up your browser or phone, type in this number, 202. Someone type this right below the video for me, please. Type in 202-999-3515. Text the word manifesto. Text the word manifesto, and you'll get the happy entrepreneur manifesto, which we'll be happy to get that over to you immediately. And I want you to read it at least once a day for the next seven days. I always say, cool, as you've been over there not needing to think, because that's you, you just you just rock out, my man. Um, 
Take a moment and talk about the results that show up in your life are just as important as the results that show up in your bank account. Maybe that'll lead you into framing what I want them to see before I give you a chance to have your closing thoughts. So um, there's a piece that I wrote for uh, TEDx Wall Street that asked me to to uh, open the open that conference. And I was like, Wall Street. I mean, I've done I've done plenty of TED conferences in, in my life, uh, but I don't know about Wall Street. And do y'all want me to just be up there rah rah praising Wall Street? Because that's a charged word. And they were like, No, we want a balanced approach. We want you know we want you to come true. And so I was like, All right, well if I'm gonna do it, here's how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna redefine how it is that we think about money. And there's a a, a piece that I created called New Money um, that talks about how to sort of redefine our va our, our definition of of wealth, right? And it's this five step journey. And um, to me, I think that that third step kind of re kind of represents what you're talking about. The results in your life and the results in your bank account are parallel. And one of the ways that that can happen is in how it is that you define wealth. And one of the things that I talk about, I, I, I have a whole keynote around, mm -hmm. around this. And the pivot point, when I talk about the five steps to how to get rich quick in your mind, right, to create richness in your mind, the the first one, the first step is, you know, so the most the most common and selfish version of wealth. It's all about, I want to be a baller and just have the big cars and the yacht, right? It's like every hip hop song ever, right? And then uh, and then suddenly you begin to start learning about money. And it's not just about working and getting that paycheck and getting the bonus and trying to work your way up the ladder, but it's about making your money work smart for you and investments and financial legacy and financial literacy, et cetera, et cetera. And then the third step I talk about, that's when the pivot happens because you guys have experienced say the phenomenon of when you're, when you're single and you're young and you're, you're, it's your friends, it's, it's Christmas and you go get yourself, you go get your friend a Christmas gift or a holiday gift and uh, you get a gift for that person. And then that person has kids and then holidays come along again. And who do you typically get the gift for? Like after a while, you start getting the gifts for their kids and they say, thank you. They receive that gift as if it was a gift for them. They have the mentality that a gift for my child is a gift for me. And suddenly that's the first time that wealth begins to exist outside of our personal selves. And that becomes that third turn in, that, in this journey, this five-step journey towards creating new money and redefining wealth. And how I, how I deliver that in the pieces, I say, this year, every verse starts with, this year, it's about the money. Because that's how we start every New Year's, right? If they, January 1st, be like, yo, this year, it's about the money. And that's how, every, you know, our January 1st is. Uh, every I don't care if it's in November, I don't care if it's in April. It's like, yo, I'm coming out this month, this day's about the money, right? But we're redefining what money is. It's about working wise enough to make dollars that ensure that my net worth is hereditary. Filling the void between my life expectancy and financial legacy. It's about letting my kids teach me to not just get wealth, but give it. It's about trust funds and college funds and instructions on how to go get it, like give and grow rich. Leaving my kids enough fish to feast for generations, but teach them to protect the ocean, to grow their fish population, super size with extra pride, because real wealth is not defined by whether I can pay for it, but by whether I can pay it forward. So basically, it's about the money. I think that's what that manifesto was about, and that's what this next section of videos that I'm gonna play you is about, because you're gonna get a chance to see some of the ways that I've helped people, uh, entrepreneurs and businesses, deliver those kinds of manifestos in very, very creative ways. Like a, an author who I helped to have a best-selling launch, by creating an animated video with him, working with, uh, again, collaborating with uh, folks that did the music, folks that did the animation, and I did the voiceover and the poetry to represent his book concept in such a wacky, creative way that it cracked people open and made them applaud the video, give standing ovations to just the video before they'd even read the book because the expression of what he had to teach was so different, so unique, and so powerful. That's what I'm trying to help people do. That's what I want you guys to help your community do, whoever they are, and to remember that in doing so, in serving them in that way, it fills your bank account. But if the goal is to first fill your pockets with soul food 
as I say in this in this in this uh in this uh, poem, New Money, I say I want you know I want my pockets filled with collard greens because my empire only eats soul food. <laughs> so yeah, you make those greens, make those greens, but make sure they collard greens so that your empire only eats soul food, and that's how you get that parallel between the bank account and your life. I love it, man. I love it. That is so powerful. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and show it here. We'll be back in less than two minutes. When we come back, I'm going to ask uh, Seiko a couple of rapid fire questions and then ask him if he'll have his final thoughts, by the way, for those folks that are out there. I'm going to also ask him if there is a, a website or a place that you can go to and continue to follow him. He said, follow him, find him anyway on Seiko Andrews. But I'm going to ask him if he'll reveal something. You know, he'll reach into his treasure chest of secrets and show us something ain't nobody seen yet because it's not quite done. Hint, hint. <laughs> It ain't quite done, but I don't worry. I'm gonna ask him. I'm asking. I'm gonna ask him. Don't worry. I'm asking for all of you out there to say, "Shay, gas him for a little bit more." I'm gonna ask him to show us something that ain't nobody seen yet that he's been working on. Yeah, what's he working on? We want to know what that is too. See, talking about us. All right, let's go ahead and let's go and show it to him. We'll be back in less than a couple minutes. Take it away. Hit the share button. If you haven't hit the share button, you're just watching. Hit the share button. Invite you are awesome. Pay that message forward to someone else. Bless someone else. That's right. Woo! <laughs> we waited so long. I gotta go. You got me laughing over. This is so much fun. All right, take. This entire world will be our beneficiary or our casualty because the future of giving can only be sustained by the presence of all three pillars of change, where government and philanthropy meet the GBI. So we must remember our ties to everyone that's alive, till we join ourselves to our global social community, till we embrace self-interest, till we purpose profit, and till we define the way we speak capitalism, till we sound like a world of rabbit hunters searching for the wascally rabbits of irresponsible habits and trying to rehabilitate those me-first addicts who cringe at the new vocabulary of we first and foremost us first of all together in the first place we first in the race to first face first impressions of we at first sight for sore eyes must be bigger than my self-interest that doesn't know the first thing about selfish self serving everyone at the table because as long as we are first come we'll always be first served best as an ensemble casting the first stone at apathy that we carry out feet first in line to embrace this opportunity knocking and open the door like ladies first and learn from before like elders first and preserve what's in store for children first right of refusal to follow anything less than people who allow nothing less than progress that creates nothing less than profit that has nothing less than purpose that accepts nothing less than a world of conscious corporations contributory consumers and a come-of-age capitalism that finally puts we first if my voice raises the impact of the knowledge we impart it's this not what educate truly means at its heart whether we educate future students on the next level of success within their reach or we educate future employees on the next level of purpose they can achieve either way the next level of education has a home and this is where it lives the promise of education has a name and these are its initials the road to education has a map and here is where it is found. The future of education has a beautiful voice and we, ladies and gentlemen, are how it sounds. In the game of life, this young man will face many opponents. Most will fall before him. One still stands within him, so he in armor that bears the letters L B J must take knights and storm castles to face his own potential and claim his king within and checkmate will echo through the halls of Hoop Town. Creative content right there on the mark, man. Um, what did you enjoy most about putting those type of creative contents together? Oh man, it's fun. It's just fun. Like uh, you saw the animated video and working and, and seeing how the animators brought my words to life was just a, a, an honor. Uh, it was a celebration of my words. And then and then for uh, the online university, you know, being able to celebrate educators and show them a version of themselves that they had never seen before. They hadn't thought of themselves in that way. I had to fight them on it a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. I was like, the, the whole premise of it was, 
was I am an educator and I don't care if I'm the custodian at a, 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 a university or if I'm the, the, the IT person at an online university or if I'm the enrollment counselor, whatever it is, I'm an educator because I am part of the system that allowed someone to get an education and helping the people, helping people to rethink themselves like that, reimagine themselves, gives sticks the chest out, gives them a sense of pride. They're like, that's right. My job does mean something. I love when that stuff happens. And the same thing with the Nike one. And just for that one, that was celebrating LeBron James earlier in his career. Right. And we've seen where that's gone. You know, mm -hmm. you're welcome, LeBron. None of that would have happened if it hadn't been for this dude right here. So you're welcome. I'm still waiting on my cut, Mr. James. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's but, right. You know, I know that's Nike, right. Put it in. Nike's been an incredible partner with me and, and my over my the course of my career since since very early on and inspiring um, you know, folks around understanding that they are athletes in the same way that I inspire folks to understand that they are educators. So I love that just from the sense of being able to get people to see themselves in a new way. And what I'm communicating to my clients right now is that all of that was created virtually. Right. All of that can be created virtually. So we don't have to stop creating that effect for our audiences simply because we're shut in. Yeah, no, no, that, that makes a lot of sense. What do you say to the persons out there that's, or the companies out there that's watching right now? This video goes viral, which it does often. In this case, it already is. Um, that says, you know, I like what I'm hearing, Sekou. Sounds good, but I don't have all my content together. I don't know what I would say. I'm not into the music part, but we know we need to do something like that. We need to move in this direction. It needs to happen now, like now. Um, what do you say to that person? I'm going to suggest they reach out to your office, by the way. That's one thing. And you can give them yeah. a way that somebody can contact you that might be like, look, I need to start the discussion because what I do is unique. <laughs> you know, there's always what I right. do is unique, right? What I do is unique and I want something customized for me. So two things, two part questions. Number one, for the person's out there just wants to have the discussion with your office or with your company about how what they're doing can fit in and how the creativity can work for them. Or the speaker, author, coach is like, you know what? I, I like this. I'm not, I don't have everything together, but maybe he can help me. How can mm -hmm. they, how, sh how should they reach out to you? Um, yeah. So yeah, absolutely. The first, the, the, the primary answer is reach out. I got you. You're not alone in this. So hear that message clearly. You're not alone in this. This is the time that people are collaborating. I mean, you see all the challenges that are happening and all the different collaborations that people are doing from, from within their living rooms and dining rooms and bedrooms. So you're not alone. And, and also everyone in the world is claiming, yeah, we can offer our services virtually. And they're trying, they're scrambling to figure that out in this new space. This is not new for us. This is not a new service. This is not a new offering for us. Uh, so we're very comfortable in this space. And, and that's why I, I showed these videos to create so that you can see the evidence of that for the world's largest companies over the past 15 years of us, you know, successfully doing this for, uh, for organizations and getting great results. So reach out to us, sekouandrews.com, S-E-K-O-U, andrews.com. Um, and you'll fill out my, my uh, you know, inquiry form. Give us some information about what you're interested in. We'll set up a phone call. And then I, I do, just so you know, what happens is, because people are often like, but you're not in our industry. You're not an expert in our industry and so forth. So how is it that you're going to, no, 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 no. My expertise is not cloud computing. My expertise is not diabetes or apparel. My expertise is in helping you to communicate what it is that you want to say better than you ever could have imagined saying it. That's my expertise. And doing so in creative ways that are human and that move people emotionally while getting across the business content that you need to get across, making that story unrecognizable but unmissable. And so I do a very detailed creative call that actually surprises my clients. They go, wow, most of our speakers, they just talk to us for 15 minutes and then they they go, here's what I'm going to talk about. And OK, what's your theme? Got it. And then they go give us their canned speech. In your creative call, we learned stuff about us we didn't even know. <laughs> you made us probe our depths to, to, to find out things that we didn't know about ourselves or that we needed to go and really answer in order to have a successful event. So people really appreciate that creative call process because it gives them the reassurance that I am going to be able to give voice to their audience and their industry in an authentic way. And that's very important. So reach out to me. We'll have that call. And um, I'll you know, continue to show you examples of what it is that I'm doing. And then we'll create a custom message 
um, and we'll create some custom content that you can get out to whoever it is that you need to get it out to. If it's, uh, like I said, if it's a commencement speech, we'll do a digital commencement speech. If it's a message that you want to go out every Monday to your remote workforce to inspire them to have a great week uh, and a great day, we'll do that. If it's something that you want to remind your customers that you're still the place to be and that you're still can, you still can serve them, we'll do that. Like very flexible, very malleable, very authentic, and very um, customized to, to your needs. So reach out, follow me on social media as well. Make sure you connect with me on LinkedIn. Absolutely connect with me on LinkedIn because uh, that's where I'm going to be sending a lot of the insight about my trainings. Remember right now, if you are a leader, this is the time to invest in up-leveling your leadership voice. This is the time to invest in inspiration training. This is the time to figure out how to be tr how to be inspiring in the two-dimensional uh, digital space, as well as how to be inspiring once you're back on your, your actual physical live stage. Now is the time to invest in your voice. And I have helped people get their first standing ovations at TED Talks and, and, and business conferences. I've helped people to inspire their uh, their you know, community, their customers or their team, whether they're real estate agents or they're executives or they are, you know, uh, uh, trying to inspire uh, investors to invest in the company. I have helped plenty of entrepreneurs and executives up level their voice and become more rock star in their speaking and in their inspiration. And now's the time to do that. So whatever it is that you need, the main thing to know is you're not alone in figuring it out. This is not your expertise. This is my expertise. But the business that we're both in is the business of inspiration. So I got you. Man, that's super powerful, man. I appreciate you, man. Appreciate the heart to give, the heart that you have to serve. You spent so much time. I believe this is our longest episode. That's uh, no surprise, by the way. Um, but <laughs> I'm the longest episode. I'm breaking <laughs> records up in here, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Without any script, there's no run sheet. I mean, there's no list of questions. <laughs> this guy. Just... I didn't even know what I, I didn't even know what we was doing when I logged in. I was like, Chase just told me to be here. I told my wife I was like, she was like, it's, you got to go do an interview right now. I was like, yeah, baby, I got it. My boy, my brother Chase just was like, hey, I need you here on this day. And I think he might have told me that there was going to be segment something, but I don't remember what he said because I'm busy trying to deal with this pandemic. But he told me to show up and I'm going to show up and I'm going to serve because that's what we do. Man, I, I appreciate it. Just two more questions and then we'll let you go ahead and give your, your final thoughts if, if you would. Um, yeah. You know, who's been maybe you've had so many mentors along this journey of life. You really have. But what's one lesson that you learned from maybe one of your mentors along this journey that you could share with us that could help us right now? And there's so many mentors I'm sure you've had. Um. Hold on, hold on. That was my mama calling. You know what I mean? Y'all just look. This is how much I love y'all. Okay, I just, I just sent my mom the voicemail. Okay, on national, on national public platform. I just sent my mama the voicemail. That's because well, y'all. Well, your, your mama gonna call you back. My mom keeps calling my phone. You like, <laughs> is everything okay? I'm trying to reach you right now. Right. That's because of y'all right there. I did that. Speaking of mom, let me give a shameless plug there since I got your attention. My mom is an amazing uh, yoga teacher trainer out of Atlanta, and she has now taken her yoga teacher trainer course online as well. So she just did her first online yoga trainer course. But one of the things that she's helping people to do is to make sure when you talk about routine and mindfulness and centering yourself, she's teaching people how to use yoga during this time when we're stuck at home dealing with all this to make sure that we create certainty in our mind and our body to help us deal with the uncertain times. Mm -hmm. So if anybody wants some information on that, you can go to High Dye Inc. H Y D Y I N C dot org and check out what moms is doing. See, that makes up for me sending her to voicemail. Boom. <laughs> Universe is balanced now. Okay. So mentors. Um, I would say, uh, you know, I, it's funny because I haven't had very formal mentors. Right. Like I want you to be my mentor and we're constantly, I've, I'm, I'm a constant learner. And so just like I say, you know, I learned something pivotal from you. And that one day, like I have my go to's for just people that are in my life for certain seasons and, and needs that I just lean on and try to surround myself by those folks that are greater than me. But one of those consistent sources in my life has been Norman Lear. Mm -hmm. um, I did a uh, for those of you that don't know, Norman Lear is legendary TV film producer, uh, the, the Jeffersons and Good Times and, Art, you know, All in the Family, all these sort of groundbreaking shows about race relations and things like that. He did as well as films like Stand By Me and 
and you know those kinds of things. And so um, he and, and he's also incredibly political. And he purchased a, uh, a print, an original print of the Declaration of Independence, and toured it around to young folks to inspire them to vote in elections. And uh, eventually, he had some poets that joined that tour. And um, I was one of the poets. We toured around and we inspired over a million youth to vote. And during that tour, I mean, that was one of the times when I was just learning from this this great man, this legend. And I never forget one of the things uh, that he said was, um, hang a lantern on it. And I never forgot that phrase, hang a lantern on it. And what he was saying, we were struggling trying to figure out how do we... How are we gonna how are we gonna inspire people to vote? But it's nonpartisan. We can't tell them who to vote for. But we just try, want to get it, want to get them active. And and we were struggling with it. And he said, Well, you know what? When you when you um w- when you're struggling with something, instead of trying to push it to the shadows, instead of trying to hide it in the darkness and figure out how to work around it, hang a lantern on it. Like let that suddenly be the thing that you use as your as your device. So it's almost like that mentality of saying, if you're struggling with writer's block, write about writer's block, right? Mm-hmm. And so for us, it was if you're struggling with how to inspire people to vote, write about struggling with how to inspire people to vote, because people will find connection with you in that struggle because they're struggling, too, with whether or not they should vote and whether or not it is meaningful and doesn't matter. And we voted. But look who we got as the president this year. Look who we got as a congressman that year or whatever. So write about that. Write about that. That very human struggle you're having. Hang a lantern on your truth. Because that's going to be what allows you to connect with people. And I think that was so valuable to me. And that's how I ended up uh, being able to do what it is that I do now in the business world and in, and in the corporate world and in this world where people don't expect me and all this <laughs> right, to show up and actually find, have them walking away going, damn, that was relevant. And that was I got actionable takeaways and so forth because I just hung a lantern on the human side of business and connected, connected with it. Uh, connected with them through that. So I would say Norman has been an incredible mentor. And the last thing that I'll uh, leave you with from as a bit from Norman Lear that I just love, it's not his phrase, but I don't think, but he said it and I never forgot it, which I think you guys will, will appreciate and need to remember this. At the, at the moment of commitment, the universe conspires to ensure your success. At the moment of commitment, the universe conspires to ensure your success. So just think about how powerful that moment of commitment is and what the universe has been waiting to give you and to deliver for you. And all they needed you to do was just commit. That was powerful. And I got that from Norman as well. Wow, man. Well, I appreciate it. Let me once again say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for spending time with the Happy Entrepreneur Show and all the folks that have been watching. We certainly appreciate it. Um, I know that you can always make more money, man. There's no question. You can help people make more money. You can make more money. But none of us, myself or anyone watching, can make more time. We can always make more money, but we can't make more time. You've given us the most precious resource you have. You gave us time away from your family. I know how much you spend time with your wife and you're always incorporating all your social media posts i love how you do that by the way it's just it's just really cool you guys got to follow seku man he's he's certainly different but he's so cool and unique so i love how you do that so i'd like to turn over you man um so you can have your maybe your final thoughts and uh, these shows i don't know if i told you but at the end um we'd like for the guests to share their final thoughts um Mm -hmm. whatever's on their mind whatever's on their heart Uh, we've got to go out here when these these lights go off and we'll no longer be broadcasting through the power of these fiber optic lines right now. Um, uh-huh. People got to go do what you've been talking about. And yeah. it's real. It's about as serious. It's about as real as it's going to get. So, you know, whatever's on your heart, man, whatever your thoughts. Again, let me say thank you. Let me let sure. you know we appreciate you. And uh, you've been rocking out, man. So thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. And, and, thank oh, you before bro. you go, for those folks that are yeah. watching right now, look right below the video and give Seku a digital applause. A digital applause. And one of the ways you give him a digital applause and put... Thank you, Seku Andrews. I'll put, we appreciate you, Seku Andrews. And if you're in the comments, like many have been writing comments throughout the whole time, we really love you. We appreciate you. If you're tired, just hit number one. Just hit one enter. Just hit one enter. That's a bat signal that we appreciate what Seku has done today. I know I appreciate it and every single one of you. So let's give him a digital applause as he gives us his final and closing comments. Again, thanks a lot, man. We appreciate you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Trey. I, I, I appreciate this opportunity to, to 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 reach and to serve your audience. So, thank you for inviting me. Thanks for inviting me to the, to, your, to your stage. Um, you. And um, and I'm gonna ask also ask your audience. Um, in addition to the applause, I would love to know what you what you 
learned. I love to know what your takeaway was, you know, what your favorite thing is, what, what you're going to actually apply in your life. Like put that for me, because it's important that people walk away, you know, that we walk away from these experiences better than we were before. And I am better from this experience. And I hope that you are as well. So I love to hear uh, how it is that you're going to apply that betterness, what you're going to do, what you learned, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and a couple of other quick things I want to just make sure I get in. Um, you talked about my social media. I am doing a series this month. Uh, April is National Poetry Month. Oh, wow. I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, I don't know if you guys knew that. April is National Poetry Month. So this is our month to shine as, as spoken word artists. Uh, April is also Couples Appreciation Month, which is why you're seeing my wife in some of the videos. Mm -hmm. And so I'm doing a series called April Muse, as of, you know, April Fool's April Muse. And um, basically, I'm reading a poem a day or an excerpt of a poem a day. And most of the poems are going to be about love in some way uh, and some form of, of love. And uh, I mean, and some of those poems have been written about my, my wife. So I'm bringing her in and reading the poem to her and sharing the backstory behind her and having her tell, you know, what it is that she how she how that poem impacted her or what the backstory was behind those lines. Um, and then also dedicating the poems to uh, a couple in our lives and asking you guys to dedicate the poem or the excerpt of a poem to a couple that's in your life that you say, this made me think about you and I want to honor you and appreciate you in your, in your relationship. So again, just another way that we can keep the love going. And one of the things that's going to culminate with is uh, my latest music video. I'm super, super excited about this. The album is called Seiko Andrews and the String Theory. We released it last August. We got the Grammy nomination. Um, in uh, in January, we lost to a local act. Uh, you may not have you may not have heard of her. Uh, I think her name is Michelle Obama. Have you heard, have you heard of her? <laughs> maybe not sure. Maybe a little local act. You may not have heard. You know, a lot of people don't know about her. But uh, <laughs> so we we I decided to go ahead and give it to Michelle. You know, she ain't done really nothing with her life, so I figured she needed it. Um, but you know, it was an honor to to share the space with her and all the other nominees. Like, to, if you got to lose to somebody, lose to <laughs> lose to like the number one selling autobiography in the galaxy. Um, and so, uh, so you know, the, but the album I'm very proud of is a six track album called Seiku Andrews and the String Theory. You can get it everywhere: iTunes, Spotify, everywhere. Uh, titles, et cetera, et cetera. And the latest video for that album for the track called Love Says, which is really powerful. It's, it's what the world needs to hear right now. And that's coming out this month. And I'm really excited about the video. So make sure that you are subscribed to my YouTube page and my email and that you are just part of my tribe so that I can share this message with you because I promise you, you will need this message. You will cherish, cherish this message. It's going to be very important and very important to, uh, to have and to share. Um, so do that. And then you can learn about my stage mic speaker training program. You can learn about, uh, you know, everything that I'm doing and everything that I'm teaching um, on my website. So make sure that you are joined to everything. And I think the final the final thought that I want to leave you all with is one of the one of the other poems from that album, one of my most popular keynotes and something that's a, a pillar of my belief system, which is be voiceful uh, to make sure that you are finding your voice to make sure that you are investing in finding and expressing and learning how to express your most powerful voice, the most powerful version of yourself, truly find your voice and then be voiceful because voice is your, is your, is your maiden name. It's your journey's theme song. Voice is the way your truth loves to hear itself, so it just keeps rambling on. And the first step to finding your true voice is to listen to voices other than your own and then print your edition. Let the similarities help you define the divisions, then say you to the world. And when met with resistance, when they tell you talk is cheap, when they tell you talk is cheap, you tell them silence is unaffordable. In this world that we live in right now, silence is unaffordable. With your community that needs your voice more than ever, your family that needs your voice more than ever, your industry that needs your voice more than ever, your neighbors and your world that needs your voice more than ever, silence is unaffordable. So be voiceful out there and let me know how I can help. Thanks, Lasse Koo. That's, that's my favorite quote. I'll let you use that, man. I was going to bring it up at the time, but I know he's going to come to that at some point. I was almost about to bring it up at the end. I said, let me give a little more time. I love that point. <laughs> we hear with it. We hear with it. <laughs> I love that. I mean, I love that. Put that right smack in the middle of the email. Once again, thank you so much. For those folks that are watching, we appreciate you. Um, I want you to know that today is your January 1st. You're awesome. Today is your January 1st. You're going to step in 
to your greatness. Today is your January 1st. You will pivot and you will have more meaning in the world. The money will come. You have more impact in the world. The income will follow. And at the end of the day, you will make a dollar and a difference at the same time. With that being said, my name, for those folks that are curious, is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make sure you hit the like button, hit the heart button, follow us on the fan page. Make sure you stay in contact. But here's what I promise you. When we get together next time, good things will happen. Remember this. Right. Time is long. Life is short. Live in the moment and enjoy it. God bless. We wish you success. Thanks a lot, Seku, man. You're amazing. Peace. <laughs>